Real, 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 real special uh, video today. This is about the Depths Headlock Jig. This is going to be my last video on it. Um, this is my favorite jig of all time. Uh, and this is only for people who are going to watch the video. You know, I'm not going to share this one a bunch. Um, I'm trying to keep this close to home as possible you know but um if we let the word get out a little bit that's all right so anyway super finesse jig um living rubber skirt fine cut living rubber skirt you know i don't know how many strands are on it but it looks like a thousand <clears throat> and it's the quarter ounce is the go-to with this uh rig in fact I need everyone to try to think of a name for this jig. I want to call it the Jinko or the Grand Verga in Ode to Bacharach Lake in Mexico. Because that's where this idea came from. And then I don't know if they're using it on a finesse jig down there, but I sure did. And if you watched uh, earlier videos, I talked about it and... How I beat on them. Well, this is going to be a long video too because it's the only one I'm doing on the Depths Headlock Jig. Uh, if you saw in the photos, you can see that hook. Man, it's the best hook ever. Uh, I don't think I've lost too many uh, fish on this jig. Well, I did lose a big smolly one time, but anyway, I'm over it. So. Anyway, when I've been going out to do these videos, you know, it's, I go out and I kind of like fish a little area and I try to find where the bite is. Well, I wanted to go out because, it, man, it looks like a beautiful shallow frog day. It's going to be overcast again and all the fish, um, the bite's been up shallow. So that's what I was expecting and sure enough, it wasn't. So I kind of went and checked this outside spot and it was so loaded and i shuffled through a few baits you know um when you get out on these deep spots and they're all schooled up you know you can throw one bait for a while and then they kind of get sick of it and then you can throw another one and then it fires them back up it's what i did here and i just kind of like rotated but all these videos are the uh jinko rig the finesse depths headlock jig with a 7.75 yamamoto cut tail worm or you can use a senko um but you saw in that first underwater video how that longer cut tail worm looks so much nicer than that senko and i don't know if it gets bigger bites but it gets bit big time so quarter ounce, I'm using this again on a 7.1 medium 
uh, Elliott spinning rod, Shimano 3000 reel, 20, no, 12 pound braid to 8 pound floral. And just letting it drop, I'm jigging it, stroking it, bumping it, just doing whatever I feel like down there. And then also I was throwing the, my other rotation of baits was uh, the Dark Sleeper. I was using that and this, and every once in a while I'd throw the back rack burrito just to see if anything wanted to eat it. And of course a couple did, but yeah, I went out there and beat on them with this jig. I couldn't believe it. See that little green and black marker buoy off to the side? I almost thought about using it. But it's good practice for me getting lined up on these spots. And basically, this is, goes out to 12 feet there is where I'm casting. And then it drops off to like 20 on the other side of the point. But there's a little hard spot. And then there's the weed edge in the hard spots just on the outside of the weed edge. And I mean, you couldn't ask for a better, uh, spot, you know, probably some ice, ice fishermen threw a bunch of rocks down there or something. Who knows? But yeah. Ooh, look at that booty. Yep. So yeah, I was lazy today too. Cause I only wanted to hook up the one camera cause I was testing the shallow bite and it wasn't paying off, so I was kind of like, F this, I was getting ready to go home and go back in and uh, made a cast out deep, man, and it was on, and I'd get caught up in the bite, you know, and I'd rather catch the fish than shoot the video or, you know, whatever, hook up cameras, so maybe one day that'll change, but probably not so yeah anyway you know um setting the hook pretty good on them that uh big cut tail worm man it just looks so cool and um what else did i want to talk about on this not much you know um i know you can find these jigs uh with the silicone skirts but the real deal is the living rubber ones I have a few on the eBay store. They're priced um, crazy high because I don't really want them to sell, but it's worth it. Um, yeah, what a fun day. I don't even know how many fish I caught. Maybe a hundred. Got a haircut. So yeah, I've been enjoying everybody's comments too. Um, great advice in the comments section, man. Check it out. People sharing super sneaky tips, you know. So, so we're checking out in the comments. I'm loving the feedback. Also, I'm trying to keep the background noise down. I On some clips, it, I forget. And I watched the video and I was like, whoa. I was a little loud. I'm not sure which video it was, but sorry. My bad. But yeah, just sitting out there, whacking on them. I mean, every cast. A lot of the time I let the GoPro run instead of shutting it off in between fish. And, man, it was like every three minutes, fish. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, the shallow bite's been amazing. And then all of a sudden, dead. And what's funny is, on this side of the lake is different. What's going on on this side of the lake is different what's going on in the middle of the lake and opposite of what's going on on the far end of the lake. It's crazy that you would think that the bass would kind of all be in the general same areas, but... <laughs> they're not you know so if you guys 
go out and you can't find your school that you were beating on out deep, check the next shallow spot in that general area because I've been so surprised how much these fish move day to day, every other day. It's been amazing. Yeah, so let's uh, like the video. Let's uh, get some subscribers. Let's check out that eBay store so I can get a new shirt. I only got three shirts. You guys will get sick of seeing them. <laughs> Yeah, I've been playing with different uh, camera angles too, so if you guys prefer one camera angle over another, let me know. I'm not going to do that chest mount though, I hate looking at the reel in the hands. I was thinking about strapping the GoPro to my leg. <laughs> because with the, if it's on the head, I have a tendency to be looking all over. Bikini pattern, you know, a little bikini go by, you gotta look. Yeah, just reeling into them, setting the hook, missing. Don't worry, they come back. Yeah. I don't know where everybody lives, but if you live in Minnesota and you have a chance to check out an Elliott spinning rod or their bait casting rods, man, they are phenomenal. And you got to go with the performance handle. That other handle, it's nicer, it's a lot more sensitive, but the real seats were breaking on them so maybe for walleye or panfish guys it might be okay but not for these bass yeah they choke this jig too and this is a this is a jig i mean you can bring it up with any trailer you know but this is my go-to for summer you know late fall i'll probably use a little uh craw daddy osp do live craw or something like that or a do live shrimp is a super sleeper um soft plastic i'm surprised more people don't talk about it but i guess the stuff people don't talk about is you know the stuff they're trying to keep quiet so yeah when i was doing the research for this video too man i couldn't find nothing on youtube you know nobody talking about it you know nobody in english anyway so i'm sure you guys are getting sick of oh he only uses depth stuff well these are all my favorite stuff and that's the first th few videos so and i'm trying to find a little niche in the YouTube game, and I don't see anybody using this stuff, so. So that's why I'm just uh, bombarding you guys with depths, depths, depths. Don't worry, it'll be Strike King soon. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so anyway. Just a killer bite, man. These fish are fighting so hard. I'm boat flipping them. Yeah, my reel handle is on the other side. I can't do it the other way. So what? Make fun of me. Maybe if I get uh, 100 subscribers, I'll put it on the other side and we'll see how well I do. Maybe I'll do it for drop shotting. But yeah, man, this jig, man, save this jig for the state tournament, the regional tournament, you know, that uh, when you're struggling, this ain't a team tournament bait. This is a U-bait. Just kidding. I've used it on, where did I use it? Oh, the Blackfish Classic or whatever out on Minnetonka. Ooh, If you do your research, you can find the pictures. Yeah. I think I ran out of the cut tail worm here and I had to use a Cinco. Cinco just doesn't have that same action, you know, as that cut tail.
Yeah, I caught fish out here for a few hours. And <clears throat> I was like, F it. I'm going to make a cast after cast until these fish uh, quit biting. And they never quit. I ended up breaking off my last, um, well, I got bit off on my last uh, jig I had. And, man, I ran out of worms, so I was, like, picking wor or uh, sinkos up off the boat that were already destroyed. And See, they choke this jig. Most of the time, you got to get the pliers out or stick your hand way, way down there. So yeah, too, if you saw in the pictures of this jig, that eyelet is set back a little bit farther on the head. So when it rolls through the rocks, it like stands up and it's hard to get snagged. I got snagged on this uh, rocks here a little bit when I was trying um, the old ball and chain. I threw a Carolina rig down there and I never do that, but... I've been playing with a bait, and I think Carolina rigging is the jam for it. But, yeah, got it stuck down there. But this came through every time. And as soon as I would hit that hard spot, I just knew. And I would just work that bait inch by inch. Instead of, if I wasn't on the hard spot, I would kind of stroke it, you know, get that good tail action try to draw a fish over but yeah as soon as the bite kind of died i would uh throw the dark sleeper wham wham and that would die throw the burrito a few casts with that and then i'd go back to this and it was like they never saw this bait <laughs> crazy Yeah, and when I entered these videos into the editing thing, they went in backwards, so you're pretty much seeing the end of the day towards the beginning. But when there's this many clips, I was like, man, I can't rearrange it all. If anybody knows any good uh, editing apps for a uh, knob like me, leave it in the comments. Let me know, please. Oh, that one came flying. Yeah, so I probably could have trimmed some of this editing up, but I didn't want to. Just wanted to keep it how it is. But yeah, that butt seat, man, I need that. I need that. I'd be leaning back on it. It's comfortable. But if you want to see more booty, just let me know, and I'll uh, remove it for a few clips here and there. Kidding. <laughs> but yeah, man, this just goes to show you, man, you guys don't need all this fancy stuff or anything like that. Just go out there, and if you think you saw a fish when you drove over and marked it, man, turn around and make a few casts, you know? I'm out there, you know, no um, spot lock, you know. The little old, I don't know if it's a 5 or a 7 inch Lawrence. It's like an antique. But that don't matter. Fish don't care. They just choke this bait too. Look at just swallowed. Yep. I love this jig, man. If you guys get a chance, pick one up, man. Save it. I used it at Lahamadu a few years ago, man, and it caught all my uh, keepers on it. I like a little Mike Iaconelli walking around the boat when I set the hook. Yeah, man. 
down in Mexico, man, this crushes. That's where I got the idea from. Idea from. So yeah, tell me what you guys think about a name for this rig. The Jinko kind of reminds me of those old Jinko jeans, you know. The skateboarders and rollerblader dudes wore. I think I had a pair until it got caught in my bike chain sprocket and ripped them. Man, wonder if them jeans are going to make a comeback. Or I want to call it the Gran Verga rig, an ode to Mexico. And Gran Verga, you guys can Google translate that and tell me what you think. But I'm leaning towards Gran Verga rig. Northern Minnesota, late July. Yep, Minnesota bass fishing, man. If anybody out of state ever gets a chance to come up and go to Minnesota, man, it's well worth it. These fish don't get pressured for half the year, maybe more. Not a lot of people fish for them. Everybody up here is walleye, pike, muskie, panfish. So the bass uh, don't get a lot of pressure as compared to other states. And they get a decent size. Yeah, no 10-pounders, but, I mean, you might catch 103 to 4-pounders a day if you come at the right time. Or if you come to me and hire me for a day or two. Yeah, adjust that seat there. Check your line. I always check the uh, drag. I'm famous for uh, loose drag on the next cast after a fish. So I try to just uh, muscle memory every time. Yeah, bouncing a little bit. And what's funny, you think like you'd get a bunch of panfish bites on the Cinco or the Cuttail Worm? Like, I really don't, you know. Well, probably not in this spot because panfish were a mile away because they were so scared <laughs> all them bass down there yeah they were even busting the surface and when they would bust the surface i could just cast over and before it hit the bottom i mean one one had it and that's just another tell you know like if they're hitting it before it hits the bottom either they're suspended or there's a lot of fish around and they're competing for it So, yeah, good times. Another chunk choked it. Yeah, so also, too, in the playlists that I have, um, you can look under each lure, and then there's, like, a few different videos. So if if I didn't do an underwater video or this and that, um, there's video links in there or videos of it in there. And, yeah, just wanted to share this one with you guys, man. hope you guys uh, try this. If not with the depths jig, try it with a different little... Um, finesse jig just make sure it's got a good hook to it i was playing with a different jig but it had too light wire of a hook and man it just i was just bending the hook the fish were staying pegged but i mean i was having to re-bend the hook every fish and it was just a pain Yeah, this might be where I get breaking off and I'm done with it because that was, I hate wasting these jigs. So that's it. I hope everybody enjoyed the episode. Um, thanks, guys.